Now let's move forward and the uh, next stage, second uh, step is generate database in the same way there is a script. Oh, it's 24, it's a mistake for, we have only 16 cores, so the name of the scripts, script is misspelled. So we do as page and now generate. So it will uh, submit the job is generate database in inside the binary this command uh, this uh, executable so let's see what happening in the output folder it seems that there is output information from the this step, let's look in, in this output measure. Now this is the second txt text file for the this step. So now you see here NGLL 555 in edge direction. I think you cannot change it. That's what uh, I'm pretty sure in this. Oh, you can actually, you can. So you, you keep the same match that you have. I see. So you have you can change it in par in par file. The I see. Okay. Okay. So it's a good point. And uh, information from the output. It's important here. So what is important? Now suggested time step is smaller because you know the actual velocities, values. This should be, uh, condition should be taken carefully. And you can see total number of um, elements, which is about 13,000 and the uh, killer points, which is already for this simple model is close to 1 million, which is not uh, so small. It's not like a very small problem. And, one million points you calculate at each time step the equation so it's so ready so this is the second step and we visualize the vtk file from that step previously vp model overlaid with the mesh so we can skip this basically we saw this picture of VP. Now the last step is to run the solver. In the same way, we submit inside the working directory as batch submit specfam. So this will this step is more will take more time. It's generally the case. It's actual propagation of the wave field at the given mesh. So the wave field computed for each time step in the entire mesh. So we have the output. Let's look at that output. Something apparently is going wrong here. Floating point exception. So I designed specifically, uh, I put some uh, misleading value. I don't know whether this is an issue here. So if you look at the data part file, and the time step I used for purpose, uh, the bigger time step, which was suggested in uh, Spectrum generate database output. So basically the case, well, you, you can run one of, uh, trial is a time step and then adjust it. So the time step we used is bigger, is, is bigger than uh, is required for accurate modeling. So we need to reduce the time step and run it again, run the run the generate database script at step two, and then run the solver again. And let's see if this helps to solve. The problem and I'll submit the solver again with a new time step.
and if you do tail so there is uh, at least there is information output information from the solver but it's nothing inside so for this moment let's wait a little bit more okay now we have the output information from the solver it's still running you see if you go to the end of the output information uh, we see the time step value for so now the 1000 time steps are sold and we have in total 2000 so about 50% done at that moment let's look again at the end end of simulation the last line which is a good sign at least there is no complaints with your solver so we adjust the time step and now everything went uh, smoothly uh, let's look again carefully at the output solve information few important points to note Yeah, basically the total computational time for this toy problem is about one minute on 16 cores which is small and we for this reason we were able to run the imaging pretty easily iterative so we have like hundreds of hundreds of sources and few iterations 10 or 20 iteration and we can improve this model shown on this picture I, uh, I'm not sure you hear the results, it's an uh, ongoing work, but you're able to detect in this model the tunnel sitting in the middle of the model by like applying this full waveform version. So it's quite nice. So even without big resources, only 16 cores for uh, well, one or two days of the continuous computation, we get, we get a better uh, velocity model. So this is first example with internal measure. I go quickly because it's very similar if, uh, to the second example and maybe there, if there are questions we can... Yeah. The tunnel sits about uh, 10, meter, 10 meters depth in the middle and going through the wide direction through the whole y direction so at this level 10 meters and through the model like in, so there is no tunnel. in, 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 in that mo in that in that mesh there is no tunnel so and this was the idea to use some simple model starting initial guess and through iterative approach refine this model to the actual underground and the tunnel is a strong uh, heterogeneity, the void, and it is it, this heterogeneity can be mapped through this iterative approach, and the use uh, our like the model will be uh, changed not only at the level of the tunnel but also like the background velocity is also improved, and the tunnel will appear as a low velocity anomaly because it's void inside, it's uh, air. It's a starting velocity model. No, no tunnel here. So this is uh, the first example. Oh, yeah, we can the output. The we need to look at the few traces. We can look at the uh, traces. So I just show it here. So you see for far, middle and, uh, no, near, far, uh, middle and far offsets, you have the traces. And this is the surface wave. And there is a script in the, in the folder, Python simple script, to plot the binary 
the output from the spec firm, which is in this case in binary format. Uh, as I said, you use seismic Unix inside the actual work inside the imaging, which allowed us to do pre-processing and everything. But there are better ways to do it. And also we can play movie. So to, we need to convert first the output, uh, some output files to generate the movie, which can be played after in Parview. So it's also explained in the, in the instructions. And we basically use this command, x create movie shake map, to convert the output files of the wave field at few time steps at the surface to the files in the format of uh, Paraview can read. So it's uh, files.inp, I think. And using these values, you can convert and launch in this command, you convert the, you can do it quickly. So, oops. Sorry. oops. Let's do manually binary x create movie. We launch this command. We choose, now we choose these parameters first is to create files in AVS UVCD format, then time step one, the last time step, and uh, we can define using frame number, and uh, we can plot norm or velocity component. And now in output, you should have this avs.inp file and you can open them in the Paraview. So again we type Paraview, we open Paraview and we select the, uh, the these converted files uh, which has it's in the same folder results with the results. We use OK, and then apply. So here is, again, this is moving on the surface. And it's not actual frequency range we used in our mesh, not exactly. So, but you can play the movie here for all time steps. So the source is here. Let's go to the, like we can go st step by step. The source is here and the wave field propagates at the surface. Now back to the boundary condition, here's the problem, you can see it. Up to this moment, everything is fine. It's good, it's okay. Now this event, this is the boundary artifact. This is from this boundary because it's the, the way the Stacy is not as good as PML, where you can select the thickness of the PML layers and say, make it larger and the wave field will be absorbed better at, at the boundaries. And if you go further, you see now at the top, at, uh, this, at this boundary, the reflection, this is artificial. There is no, this, this wave field is not in the data. And it's obviously the artifacts you see from the boundary. This depends on the size of the mesh. Also, or on the frequency. Uh, I, I think the uh, low frequency would be probably, b like you can see the effect more on the low, low frequency. That's what I observed. So this is the first example, this and the first example. And the second example, uh, is very similar. The substantial difference is that we will use external mesh, external measure, 